Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of All About You. In today's hot topic, we will be going over the top five best cards to look out from set four, Colossal Warfare. So this is going to be a very interesting video because we will cover the best cards that you should be grabbing from this set. And this will give you a hint on what decks to look out for since these will be the most problematic and of course the best cards to play in the game during this format. Now, before we get on to the video, I want to give a sh quick shout out to my sponsor at Grade 8 Gaming. They're phenomenal, have a really nice online store where you can buy your product at cheaper prices and they also sell singles and other type of CCG related items. So I would check them out if I were you. And last but not least, I have recently launched a Patreon. In this Patreon, you will be able to learn the game from a professional standpoint and the information will be in depth. So I suggest that you do take a look at it if you are looking to step your game up. So without further ado, let's begin the video. going over the top five we will start off in fifth place and move all the way down through first starting at fifth place we have digging deep vegeta okay guys so in this set we have gotten a bunch of cards and when i mean a bunch one card per color for the most part that are going to help you self-awaken in this game, which means that it makes a lot of leaders more playable if it's on color. So Digging Deep Vegeta is our red awakener. If your leader is red, what will happen is when he attacks, you can move up to two cards from your life into your hand. In that case, if you moved at least one or more, you will gain plus 5k. And additionally, what's so amazing is, is that at the end of your combat, you will be able to re-stamp him and he can attack again, which is so amazing. So he is one of the best self-awakeners because he just allows you to go broken, essentially. You know, you can get in extra attacks while taking life and putting pressure on your opponent, helping yourself awaken. He's a very good card. And... In this same list, we have Time Trauma Mass Saiyan, and we also have Oaths Power Tapion. These are self-awakeners for each color. Trauma Mass Saiyan is for black, and Oaths Power Tapion is for blue. When they come into play, they take life. But they're a little different, because Digging Deep Vegeta, I had to list them first, because he's hands down the best. It's when he attacks, he takes life. It's not a one-time usage. Those other cards, they're one-time usage. So Colossal Warfare gave us some solid early awakeners. By turn three, you can awaken. Most leaders will be able to do that. Moving along. In fourth place, we have Bardock, the pro. I don't even call him by his full name because he is so good. He's just pro status. For one, this card has the swap mechanic, which is amazing because his swap costs zero. He's one of the free swaps in the game. Second of all, as you guys may know, swap is not a mandatory, meaning that you, if you do declare to use swap, the cost is to put the card into your hand, then you can play a card. But the, playing a card isn't mandatory, so you can literally play Bardock, use his ability, which is when he's put into play, you can move one life to your hand. And you can use swap and put them right back into your hand. So for decks like SS3, you will be able to do a lot of things. Like I used to say, SS3. This guy will allow you, if you start off with double yellow, you will be able to literally drop Bardock, swap out, drop Bardock again, swap out, and you're awakened with an SS3 leader. He helps apes. He helps a lot of archetypes that 
need awakening, such as cards like in Galactic Frieza. He's a very good self-awakener. He'll help Galactic Frieza awaken and a lot of the other yellow leaders that are not, you know, good at awakening. So with that being said, moving on, we have in third place, Time Control Corona. All right, so this chick, she made a huge impact. A lot of people were talking about her, saying that she's freaking out of control. She's unfair because she's a very good card. When she comes into play, you draw a card. But what makes this so interesting is that she has this new mechanic called Deflect which means that counter cards cannot target her. She's unaffected by counter cards, which is amazing. But what really makes her phenomenal is that when she comes into play, after drawing your card, your opponent cannot activate any super combos that allows them to put in play battle cards, period. This means that her effect says negate your opponent's Shugash. Yes, I said it. Negate that fat ass boy. So that's pretty much what she's there for. She's a good hard counter to yellow, which we needed that in a sense. But sometimes silver bullets may not be the right answer. Moving forward, we have in second place, we have newfound power Sun Gohan and the counterpart for red intensifying power trunks. So green and red both got major support cards. Similar to its little arch rival, Kaba, we have now one drops that when they to attack, you can move a life from your you can move a card from your life area to your hand. In that case, they gain critical and plus 10k. So a little bit better than Kaba in the sense because Kaba would give your opponent resources if they wanted to early game hit you. Now these cards, they don't give nothing. In fact, they take resources. So in a sense, they are better variants of Kaba. But I wouldn't say Kaba is down and out because at least Kaba gains a double strike, especially when you're going in for game or when you're putting your opponent in a bad situation. These crit attacks are only single strike, so they won't they won't really damage your opponent as much, but they will deny them resources while gaining resources of your own. Now, moving on to the number one slot. First place, the champion, the legendary flute. This card is a phenomenal card. Amazing. It is one of the best cards of the set, arguably the best of the set. It costs zero, so free is amazing. You literally target one card of three or less from your side of the field or your opponent and move it back to your hand or move it back to their hand. In that case, if you target it yourself, you draw a card. Now, at first glance, this may not seem that impressive, but in reality, it's freaking phenomenal because it allows you to reuse many battle cards like the early game cards I just discussed. It would allow you to put a newfound power Sun Gohan right back into your hand. And if you're playing the SS3 leader and started off with two green, you can drop them again and awaken. Vice versa, if you're playing a red variant, if you drop two red, you can play the power intensifying power trunks, swing out, take a card from your life, put pressure on your opponent, then use flute back to your hand, then drop it again. And you can awaken while denying your opponent two cards and being up energy against them. That is very good. And it can do wonders with other cards in this set and out of this set. So that gives you as a player a lot of room to discover. But anyways, guys, thanks a lot for listening to this video. I hope you liked it. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and leave a comment in the section below and let me know what you think. What are your top five? Again, thank you for watching. And as always, this channel is all about you.